everybody, this is Christine and welcome to Scrap and Rabbit. Today I have a tip that I think a lot of people are going to find really useful. It's raining today so I'm going to be working on a mini album and I decided that I'm going to be making my pages just single pages this time. I usually make my mini album so that my pages double as pockets and I have tags sticking out the side. And so this is going to be the first time actually that I make an album that just uses a single piece of cardstock to make the pages. I have a bit of a hard time getting some good quality thick cardstock that I can use to make single pages uh, here where I live. And I took some watercolor lessons and I'm not particularly good at it. And I have this huge pad of watercolor paper. It's really thick. It's 140 pounds. Now the paper I use normally to make my albums is I think 65 pounds. It's the Michael's Recollections paper stock. And that works great when I'm making the double layered pages. But for this one I need something super thick. And I've got this, this watercolor paper that I may as well use. 140 pounds. This is a huge pad. It measures 11 by 15 inches. So I can actually make ten six-page albums out of this one pad. It cost me about $13.99 plus tax to buy this. So uh, say, uh, say $15 even, I could make ten albums so that would cost about $1.50 per album for, for the pages. So that's not bad at all. Now this one is a very large one, 11 by 15, so I cut my paper to the size that I want. You can also get these in smaller pads and um, you can get them at Michael's. Use a coupon to make sure that you get the best price. But what this video is about is super simple binding method. And it's so simple, I'm sure other people are using it, but I'm going to share it with you today on my channel. Now normally, when people are making um, these single page albums, you have a hinge system where it might be a double hinge like that, or it might be a single hinge, and you attach the page to the hinge like that or behind it and you put all your pages and then you attach your hinges to your your spine and that works great but I didn't want to have on the back here when I mat this and I leave my little edge showing I, I can see where the hinge would connect to the page and I didn't want that and I thought well why not just make the page part of the hinge. So I'm combining the hinge and the page together and I'm going to attach that to my album. And this is what it looks like. I whipped this up yesterday in no time at all. It's so simple to do. I have a base piece like that and that's going to attach inside my album. I'm just covering my, my covers right now. And that's going to attach inside my album like that. And these pages, I think, look pretty awesome. You get a nice finish here, and they open like that. And one page covers the previous one, so you don't get that cut edge showing. Like that. And it's so simple to do, and I'm going to show you quickly how I did that. So I start off with my page and I decide what size I want to make them. I'm making the width three quarter inches longer and that will form the spine. So I'm making my, uh, my page six and a quarter inches because when I use my scrapbook paper it measures six inches and by using six and a quarter inches wide I can just cut my paper in two and make two uh, and cover two pages. So I'm going to put this on my scoreboard and I score at three quarter inches. And by the way, when you cut these pages, if you're using the watercolor paper, make sure to keep the scraps because they're great for die cutting. If you're die cutting flourishes and, and whatnot, it's nice and sturdy paper. Okay, so here's my, my first page. Then I'm going to put some two-sided tape on the hinge. I'm going to 
attach that to a background piece. So I've got this one and I'm going to fold the hinge like that so you've got your tape on the side and that's going to attach to the background piece like that. It's the same height as my page. I'm going to use my scoreboard to help line this up. Oops, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to want to place it half an inch from the edge. Now I've got six pages here. My finished uh, spine will measure about three and a half inches. I cut this to four inches in case I end up leaving a bit more space in between if I'm not exact at attaching this. So that's the nice thing about this too. You can just adjust the width as you go and then cut the, um, the paper to whatever width you want your spine. So I'm going to remove a little bit of the tape backing from here. And I want this to be perfectly straight because I don't want the pages to end up crooked in the album. So I'm going to use my scoreboard and I'm going to position this at the half inch mark. I hope you can see that. Like that. Make sure you hold it nice and solid. And then I remove the rest of the backing. Like that. So there's my first page attached. I've already scored and taped my other pages. So the next page will attach over the end of this hinge. I want to cover up this cut end. So that's why my hinge measures three quarter inches. My gusset will be half an inch. So I've put some tape on my hinge and I, again I'm going to use my scoreboard and I'm going to line it up with the one inch mark like that and attach it to the first page. I find using the scoreboard really helps to keep things nice and straight. Then I attach my third page, same thing, over the second hinge, and now I'm going to be at my one and a half inch mark. So continue attaching your pages, and the last page is a little bit different, and I'll attach my, my other pages and then I'll come back with the last page. So I finished attaching my first five pages. It took me all of two minutes to do that. How easy is it? Okay, so now my last page will attach again half an inch away, but because I want half an inch on each side here and here, I don't want that three quarter inches. I'm going to trim that down. So in other words, the hinges for the first pages measure three quarter inches and the last hinge measures half an inch. Now there's less surface to attach the page, but that's okay because when I put this inside my album, this section here is going to be covered with the liner inside the cover, so it's going to also help hold that down. So now, I'm up to the three inch mark. So now I can trim my spine piece to the, the width I need. And that's going to be three and a half inches. So I just line it up with my hinge and I'm just going to trim off this excess. Like that. Put 
some either two-sided tape or some glue on the back and then I'm going to attach this inside my album. I've already started wrapping my album so it's going to wrap, it's going to attach over this cover wrap there and so that's going to go like that. Now when I line inside my cover For example, I'm going to cut my lining so that it measures the same height as my, my piece here and I'm going to attach it close to the edge like that and it's going to cover my entire piece. So that will also help hold everything in place. And then on the back, I'm going to do the same thing. That's going to cover like that and finish covering the inside. So I've already made a couple of these that I have ready on hand to whip out some mini albums. So it's a super easy way to, to bind and now I can map my page and I'm not going to have that little edge that shows where the binding attaches to my page. So I hope you find this tip useful. Have a nice day.